Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Ryan Awesome, and welcome to the Ryan Awesome Show. Now, before we get into the show, first off, man, if you haven't done this already, man, what are you waiting for, man? Hit the thumbs up. Hit the thumbs up, and if you're new here, hit that subscribe button. And right next to that subscribe button, there's a bell. Make sure you click on that bell so you're the first ones to know when my next video will come out because I'm here each and every single week. So make sure you hit the thumbs up if you haven't already. Hit the thumbs up. And if you're new here, hit the subscribe button. And then next to that subscribe button, there's a bell. You click on that bell. And when you click on that bell, you'll be the first ones to know when my next video is uploaded. And one last thing, and one last thing, don't forget to be awesome. So yeah, don't forget to be awesome. And yeah, man, sit back, chillax, grab something to eat, grab something to drink, because you're watching The Ryan Awesome Show. And once again, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to The Ryan Awesome Show. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Ryan Awesome, and welcome to the Ryan Awesome Sh Show. Now today on the Ryan Awesome Show, we'll be talking about Impact Wrestling for October the 14th, 2021. Now, man, overall, man, really strong show, man. Strong show. Thought it flowed really nicely. I enjoyed the Chris Saban and Chris Bay match. The best match on the show, bro. And, yeah, man, overall, just a great show, man. And they're doing a great job with building up to Bound for Glory. That's coming up next Saturday. So I can't can't wait for that, man. Should be a really great show with AEW, New Japan Pro Wrestling, and AAA. And, yeah, man, just, just can't wait, man. Just can't wait. But yeah, man, we yeah we had a 20-man battle royal too in the main event. The winner of the battle royal would have been number 20, which would have been the final entrant in the Call Your Shot Gauntlet at Bound for Glory. They'll be number 20, and the runner-up, the person, the last person to get eliminated, would be starting off as number one. So that that was the the 20-man battle royal or the 20-person battle royal was built around the show. Yeah, that that that's everything that happened on Impact, man. And so, yeah, man, so, yeah, I say this in my intro all the time. If you haven't done this already, man, hit the thumbs up, man. Hit the thumbs up. And if you're new to the channel, if you're watching the Ryan Awesome Show for the first time ever, hit that subscribe button. And right next to that subscribe button, there's a bell. Make sure you click on that bell to be the first ones to know my next video is uploaded because I am here every single week, man. Wednesdays for AEW Dynamite. Thursdays for Impact Wrestling, of course. Fridays for AEW Rampage and Saturdays and Sundays are for WWE, AEW, and Impact Wrestling pay-per-views. So I'm here. And so, yeah, man, we started off the show with the X Division Triple Threat Qualifier match. So whoever won this match would have been, would have been added to the match with Trey Miguel and Steve Macklin for the X Division Championship at Bound for Glory. And so, yeah, man, so we had El Fantasmo. With Chris Bay and Hikaleo in his corner of the Bullet Club versus Rohit Raju versus Willie Mack. So, yeah, man, really, really great match to start off the show, man. So, yeah, we had Mack and Raju. They were going back and forth. We had Willie Mack. He had a Hurricanrana to Phantasmo. So, that was really impressive, man. A guy his size in the Hurricanrana, bro. Really cool. And so, Phantasmo and Raju, they were going back and forth. And then Raju hit a Stone Cold Steve Austin elbow drop. So, that was really nice on Phantasmo. And so, yeah, man, so we had a. We had Phantasmo. He was all over the place. He had a springboard crossbody, followed up by a lion salt to Mac. And then Phantasmo, he had a senton bomb to Mac. And then we had a cannonball. So Phantasmo, Raju rather, he had a cannonball to Phantasmo. And then we had Raju, he had a diving foot stomp on Mac. And then Phantasmo, he stopped the pin. And so Raju and Phantasmo, they double teamed Willie Mac. And then Mac, he had took both of them out. And so Mac, he had corner clotheslines to Raju and Phantasmo. 
And then we had a double Samoan drop to Raju and Phantasmo. And so Mac, he, he kept up. So he kept up and he hurt himself a little bit. He, I think he hurt his back. But yeah, right after that, he still ended up hitting a standing moonsault anyway on both of these guys. And so both of these guys, they kicked out. And so Phantasmo, man, he had a he had a hurt Karana. This is, this is one of the best spots in the match, dude. So Phantasmo, he was at the top rope. And so you had Willie Mack. Oh, no, Willie Mack. Willie Mack was on the top rope, and you had Phantasmo. He he ran up to Willie Mack and hit a hurt Karana. Hit a hurt Karana on Willie Mack. Willie Mack fell off, fell off the top rope and landed right on top of Raju with a with a senton bomb. So that, that was really nice, man. And so, yeah, man. And so Phantasmo hit a diving splash, man. The height, the height on that diving splash was really awesome, man. So he had a diving splash to to Willie Mack. And so at that point, I thought that was it. I thought that was it. And so Mack, he kicked out of that. And so, yeah, so Willie Mack, he had a stunner on Phantasmo. And then at that point, you had Hikaleu and Chris Bay. They got on the ring apron, and so they were distracting the referee. And so Willie Mack took out Hikaleu and Chris Bay with a Topek on Hero. And so Raju, he tried to steal the pin. He tried to steal the win. And so he went for a roll-up on Phantasmo. And then Raju hit a flatliner to Phantasmo. And so Phantasmo, he hit Rohit Raju below the belt, which is a legal move. It's a triple threat. No disqualifications in a triple threat. And so, yeah, man. So we had to end the match, man. We had Phantasmo hit a version of the Styles Clash to Raju to win the match. So, therefore, El Phantasmo wins the match. And we'll go on to Bound for Glory to face Steve Macklin and Trey Miguel for the X Division Championship. So, yeah, man. So, yeah, that, that that should be a really great match, man. Really great match. Triple threat match. I'm going with Trey Miguel to win. I'm going with Trey Miguel to win the match. But, yeah, man. cool, Really cool spots in this match. And so, yeah, as I said earlier, man, great, great, great match to start off the show, man. And so, yeah, man. So, right after that, man, we had a backstage interview. So, we had Gia Miller. She interviews Ace Austin and Madman Fulton. And so, Gia Miller, she was asking them about their game plan tonight because of the 20-person battle royal later on tonight and she asked what's their plan and so austin he has said that his business is with christian cage and the impact world championship is far from over and yeah man austin he has said that the call your shot gauntlet match is the best way to get himself back on track and so austin he has said if things go as planned then you know his chances on winning the call your shot gauntlet and the 20 person battle royal are double and so Austin, he has said that tonight, when it comes down to himself and Fulton, Austin, he will come out as number 20 in the Call Your Shot gauntlet, and Fulton will enter at number one. And so, yeah, man, so Fulton, he has said that he will, when he goes into the gauntlet, he will take out everybody one by one. And so Austin, he has said that Bound for Glory is his night, and it's inevitable. So that was pretty much it with the interview. And so, yeah, so, of course, that was the main event later on tonight was the 20 person battle royale so yeah man so right after that man we had savannah evans with tasha Steele in our corner versus lady frost so yeah man so yeah so we had frost she started to use her speed against evans but evans had caught her with a butterfly suplex and so yeah man so evans at that point she was using her power and then frost she tried to fight back but evans cut her off with a big boot and so we had a samoan drop to frost and then frost ended up fighting back and then to end the match, man, we had Savannah Evans. She had a full Nelson slam to Frost to win the match. So Savannah Evans wins the match. And so right after the match, we had Deanna Perrazzo, the Impact Knockouts champion, and Arena De Reina's champion. And we had Matthew Raywalt came out with her too. And so they came out to the ring, and they went to go congratulate Savannah Evans on a win. And so Perrazzo, she wanted Savannah Evans to be Mickey Jane's Pick Your Poison opponent. So, yeah, so, of course, they had the, the Pick Your Poison match for Deanna Perrazzo at Knockouts Knockdown on last Saturday. And so now it was Mickey James' turn. And so Perrazzo chose Savannah Evans to be her opponent. And so Savannah Evans accepted. And so that was pretty much it. Now, with this, I like, I don't know if it's good for Savannah Evans. I really don't know. Like, we, we all know that Mickey James is not going to lose because she's a number one contender for the Knockouts Championship. And your contender should always look strong. It should not be losing. But Savannah Evans, she shouldn't be losing either, man. She just won a Monsters Ball match at Knockouts Knockdown, which was, which was a big deal, a huge win for her. 
and to have her lose, you know, the the next week. No. You know, should 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 be good, but it's not it's not gonna end up good for Savannah Evans. Like she she should not be losing, man. But yeah, Mickey James is not losing. Mickey James is not losing. So yeah, man. So that was pretty much it with that. So that was a match that was announced for next week. So it's gonna be Savannah Evans versus Mickey James in a pick your poison match. And so yeah, man. So that was pretty much it with that. And so right after that, man, we had Steve Macklin. He had a vignette. So he spoke about the exhibition championship match at Bound for Glory. So Macklin, he has said at Bound for Glory, he will be the the new X Division champion. And so Macklin, he said that he's not going after the X Division championship for the fame or the prestige, but he wants he wants to have a target on his back. And so, yeah, so that was pretty much it with that, what Steve Macklin had to say. So, yeah, man, so right after that, man, we had Jill Miller. She was backstage. She interviews Gail Kim. And so Gail Kim, she talked about the knockouts knockdown and how much of a success it was on Saturday. And so we had Decay, the Impact Knockouts Tag Team Champion. So that's Havoc and Rosemary. They interrupted the interview. And so they asked Gail Kim, like, was it a was it really a smart move to have the inspiration show up and challenging them for their knockouts tag team titles on that first night? And so, yeah, man. And then we had Gail Kim. She was talking and she got interrupted by a delivery guy that had delivered a package for Gail Kim. And so it came from Sydney, Australia, where which where the inspiration are from. And so it was a letter. And so Gia Miller, she read the letter. And so, yeah, Decay, you know, they, they said that they will bring the violence to the inspiration that Bound for Glory. And so that was pretty much it with that. Now, now when they when they announced the inspiration, a.k.a. the Iconics showing up on Bound for Glory, I thought they were just going to show up. I didn't know they were going to compete. I thought they were just gonna show up, just to show up, but they did like, dude, they having a championship match on their first night. Like, like, wh why, why are they having a championship match on their first night? Like, that, that's that's the one thing I don't get. They should buy after the championships, but get some wins first. You have to win first to get a title opportunity. You can't just, you just you can't just come, come to a place and just have a championship match on your first night. Like, like, dude, that's not how it's supposed to work. You're supposed to build up wins. You're supposed, to, you're supposed to build up momentum and then get a title opportunity. You win first, and then you go after those titles. But, yeah, that, there, there are other teams, not that many teams, but there are other teams that are far more deserving than the inspiration. I, I, would, I, would, say the, I would say Kimberly and Brandy Lauren should go after those titles. They should go after those titles. Or who else? Savannah Evans and oh they already had that shot. <laughs> that that's pretty much it. That's pretty much it. But yeah, I w I would have sent them first. But yeah, have have them get some wins first, and then you send them after the tag team titles. But yeah, they I don't, I don't know I don't know what's gonna happen at Bound for Glory, but they should not win those tag team titles on their first night. I know it's their debut, but they never should have been putting no title match on their debut. But yeah, man, that that was that was pretty much it with that, man. And so right after that, man, we had VSK with Brian Myers, the most professional wrestler. Brian Myers in his corner versus Rich Swan with Willie Mack in his corner. And so yeah, man, really good match this match was. And so yeah, man, we had a Ushi Garoshi to Swan, which was nice, man, beautiful. And so Swan kicks out of the move, and then yeah, we had VSK he had a slam. Follow up by a standing splash to Rich Swan. So that was really impressive, man. Really impressive. Very athletic, man, VSK is, bro. And so, yeah, so Swan, he started fighting back with jabs. And then he had a roundhouse kick to VSK. And so he had a standing frog splash to Phoenix. Not Phoenix. VSK. And then we had a Phoenix splash to VSK to win the match. So Rich Swan wins the match. And that was pretty much it with that, man. For, for a quick match, man, it was really good, man. And so, yeah, man. So right after that, man, we had the Swingers Palace. We had the Swingers Palace. So everybody in the Swingers Palace, they were packing up their stuff because they got shut down a couple of weeks ago. And so, yeah, so Johnny Swinger, Hernandez, the Swingerellas, Alicia, they were all packing up their stuff, their belongings and all that stuff, and they were going their separate ways. And so Swingerella, we had Swingerella, number one, she went to go talk to Johnny Swinger. 
and she started talking about her feelings for him and all that stuff. And so she said that she had feelings for him. And so Swinger had turned her down. Swinger had turned her down. And so Swingerella number one went, she, she cried. She cried and she ran away. And so, yeah, man. And so Alicia Edwards and Swingerella number two went to go console Swingerella number one. And so, yeah, man. So Swingerella number two is left in the Swingers Palace. And so, yeah, man. And so we had Chris Saban. We had Chris Saban. He came into the swing, to the Swingers Palace. You know, Chris Saban, he always used to come to the Swingers Palace. And he loves the Swingers Palace. And so he went to come he went to come in to pay his respect to the Swingers Palace. And so yeah, man, so we had Swingerella number two. Her name was Riley. And she said that she had feelings for Chris Saban. And so yeah, man, and she wanted to she wanted Chris Saban to stay in Nashville. That's where the impact tapings were. She wanted Saban to stay in Nashville with her. And she doesn't want him to go to Las Vegas for Bound for Glory. And so Saban, he has said his only his one and only true love is the wrestling ring, and so yeah, so Riley she said that she understood and she left, and so Saban he stayed behind while everybody else left, and so they had like a quick montage of the swinger the swingers palace, the memories of the swingers palace and all that stuff, everything that happened in the swingers palace and yeah, and so St- Saban Saban at the end of this he said that. You know, I still love this place. I still love this place. And so that that was pretty much it with that, man. That was pretty much it with the Swingers Palace. Swingers Palace is being put to rest. And yeah, man, at first, when I first saw the Swingers Palace, at first I didn't, I didn't know what I was watching. But at the time went by, I started to warm up to it. Thought it was really funny, man. And, you know, it gave people who weren't on the show something to do. Or gave people that, you know, gave people that wasn't doing anything on the show something to do so yeah man that, that that's what the swingers palace was man but yeah man so that was it with that and so right after that man we had scott damore we had scott damore and heath slater or heath miller whatever you want to call him or heath they were backstage they talked and so scott damore he had a contract he had a contract for heath and so yeah he wanted heath to sign a contract and so yeah he handed him the contract and so he has said, before I sign it, I want a match. I want my first match to be at Bound for Glory. And I want my first match to be against Violent by Design. And so, and he has said, I want Rhino. I want Rhino to be my partner. I want him to be my tag team partner. And so, yeah, man. So, Scott, he has said, man, are you, are you sure you want this? Like, are you sure that Rhino wants to be your partner? Because he still haven't chose a side. He still haven't chose a side. And so, yeah. He has said that, like, I know Rhino. I know Rhino. Rhino is my best friend. I know him. And I'm going to talk to him. When I get the chance, I'm going to talk to him. And so, yeah, he has said that, you know, after I talk to him, if he, st- if he says no, then I'm going to just go in there alone. I'm going to just go in and fight violent by design by myself. And so, yeah, man. And so, Scott, he's still not sure about it. He's still not sure about it, but he, he says, Scott, like, please, can you please give me an opportunity to talk to Rhino about this? And so Scott, he has said, okay, I'll give you that chance. And so, yeah, so Heath, he signed a contract, and that was pretty much it. So it was made official, so it's going to be Violent by Design versus Heath Slater or Violent by Design versus Heath Slater and Rhino. You know, if Heath Slater can get Rhino on the same page as he. But, yeah, man, so that was, that was pretty much it with that, man. And so right after that, we had another match. So it was Chris Bay with the Bullet Club in his corner. So that's El Fantasmo and Hikaleu versus Chris Saban with Finn Juice in his corner. So that's Finn Juice, that's David Finley, and Juice Robinson. So yeah, man, best match on the show, man. Best match on the show. So yeah, man, so both of these guys, they try to out-wrestle each other. And then Saban, he gets the better of it. And so yeah, we had one point the Bullet Club, they try to get involved in a match. But Finn Juice had stopped, stopped the Bullet Club. And so both of these teams, they're a pushing and shoving each other and so the referee had kicked out both bullet club and fin juice from ringside and so we had a drop kick man so yeah man so so yeah so chris bay he was hanging upside down and so saban had ran into the corner and hit a drop kick and so we had a springboard elbow drop to saban while saban was draped on a rope and so yeah bay he kept kicking kicking saban over and over and over again and so we had a diving clothesline to saban which was nice man 
and he kicks out. And so at the, that point, man, the crowd was split. Half of the crowd was cheering for Saban, and the other half was cheering for Chris Bay. And so we had a brain buster to Saban. Commentary team called it a vertical suplex, but it looked like a brain buster to me. And so, yeah, man, we had a running corner boot to Bay, and we had a rolling fisherman, fisherman buster to Chris Bay. So that was beautiful, man, freaking beautiful. And so, yeah, man, and Chris Bay, of course, he kicked out of the move. And so Chris Bay, he had a torture rack neck breaker to Saban. And so, yeah, once again, Saban kicks out. And so the crowd started chanting, that was three, that was three. And other half of the crowd saying, no, it wasn't, no, it wasn't. And so, yeah, man. So both of these guys, they tried to go for their finishing move and their signature moves, but they kept reversing each other's moves. And so we had a jumping leg lariat to the back of Saban's head. And so, again, the crowd was split. And so Chris Bay, he tried to go for a frog splash, but he missed. And so, yeah, man, so both of these guys, they took each other out with clotheslines. And so, yeah, so they were going back and forth for strikes. And we had a roll into a kick. Or, yeah, a roll to a kick to Bay. And so to end the match, man, we had a cradle shock to Chris Bay to win the match. So Chris Saban wins the match. And that was it, man. That was it. As I said earlier, man, best match on the show. Love the crowd reaction, man. And, yeah, man, both of these guys, they, they work well together, man. Their, their styles, man, clash well together. And so, yeah, man, so that was, that was it with that, man. And so, yeah, man, so right after that, we had Gia Miller. She was backstage. Gia Miller was backstage. She interviews Trey Miguel. So Trey Miguel is competing in the triple threat match for the X Division Championship, the vacated X Division Championship match. And, yeah, man. So Gia Miller, she had asked Trey Miguel about his chances on winning the X Division title. And so Trey, he went down a list of everybody he's beaten in the past. And so, yeah, man, he he mentioned Laredo Kid, And so, and Alex Zane, too. So Alex Zane that came in, he interrupted the interview. And he said that, hey, man, you beaten Laredo Kid, but you never beaten me. You never beaten me. And so Zane, he has said, and you know what? You're never going to beat me. You're never going to beat me. Like, you beaten Laredo Kid because of me. I took him out, and you just collected the scraps. And so, yeah, man. So, Trey, Trey, he has said, you know what, dude? I'm getting sick of your mouth. Like, I really am, dude. Like, he wanted, he wanted him to back up everything that he said. He wanted Zane to back up everything that he's saying. And so, Trey, he challenged Zane to a match. He challenged him to a match. And so, Trey, he has said that if Zane wants to step in the ring with me, then he'll have to bring all the sauce, bring in all the sauce he has. So, so Zane is calling himself the sauce, bring in all the sauce that you have. And so, yeah, man, so that was pretty much it with that. So I think it was made for next week. I think the match was made next week. And so, yeah, man, so right after that, man, we had a vignette from the Good Brothers, who are the Impact World Tag Team Champions. That's Doc Gallows and Carl Anderson. So these guys were still on vacation. And so, yeah, so the Good Brothers, they still wanted to know who are their challenges. They want to know who are their challenges, and they started to grow. They're, they're growing impatient, so they want to know who their opponents are. And so we'll find out next week. At first, I thought we already knew who, like, who were going to be the, the number one contenders because Bullet Club had it. Didn't the Bullet Club beat Finn Juice last week? Was it, I think it was a six-person tag team match. Yeah, yeah, it was a six-person tag team match. It was a six-person tag team match, and Bullet Club won. Bullet Club won. So I thought they were going to go to Bound for Glory and fight the Elite, fight the Good Brothers. You know, I thought we were going to get the Elite versus Bullet Club, and it was going to bleed into AEW. So I thought we were going to get the Bullet Club. But they made it into a match, a number one contenders match next week. So, yeah, I thought, I thought the number one contenders match was last week. But, yeah, but they said it was next week. But, yeah, man, so that was it with that, man. And so right after that, man, we had the 20 men, the 20 men or the 20 person battle royal. So they had men and women in the battle royal. So, yeah, so the winner of this battle royal will be will be number 20 in the, the Call Your Shot gauntlet match. The Call Your Shot gauntlet match at number 20. And whoever is the runner up, the runner up in the battle royal will be number one in the Call Your Shot gauntlet. So for the women, for the women that were in the match, whoever won the match would get a championship match of their choosing. So yeah, man. So they had men and women in this match. I even knew they were gonna be women in the match. I thought it was all guys, but 
Yeah, man. So it was a men and women battle royal. So, so yeah, first off, man, we had Moose. He eliminated Alicia Edwards. And then Swinger, he eliminated himself. Johnny Swinger, he eliminated himself while running away from Kimberly and Brandy Lauren. So they scared him away. So he ended up eliminating himself. And so Brian Myers, he eliminated Petey Williams. And then Matt Cardona, he almost eliminated Brian Myers. But the learning tree had held on to Brian Myers. And so Rachel Ellering ended up eliminating Brian Myers. And then Hernandez eliminated Laredo Kidd. And so Matthew Raywalt eliminated Hernandez and Black Tarus. And so Raywalt, he got eliminated by Matt Cardona. And so Raj Singh, he eliminated Rachel Ellering. And then Raj Singh was eliminated by Jake Something. So Jake Something eliminated Raj Singh. And so Fala Ba, so Fala Ba got eliminated during the commercial break. We didn't see it, but he got eliminated during the commercial break. They mentioned it on commentary. And so, yeah, so Jake, he got eliminated by Ace Austin. And so at one point, we had Brandy Lawrence. She spit the, she spit some miss in Fulton's face. So the, the miss guy got in his face and his eyes. And so Ace Austin, he eliminated Kimberly. And then Fulton, he eliminated Brandy Lauren. And then Cardona, he got eliminated by Fulton. And then Fulton, he tried to fight off Moose and Morrissey by himself. And then Morrissey and Moose, they eliminated Fulton. And so the final four, we had Chris Saban. Chris Saban, we already saw him earlier. He had a match with Chris Bay, so he came out here. So Saban was in the match. Chris Saban, Ace Austin, Moose, and W. Morrissey. So they're the final four. And so, yeah, man, so we had Ace Austin, Moose, and W. Morrissey, who are heels. They ganged up on Chris Saban, who is the babyface. And so Moose and Morrissey, they eliminated Ace Austin. So they ended up turning on each other. So Moose and Morrissey, they eliminated Ace Austin. And so, yeah, so this was not good for Chris Saban because Moose and Marcy, they're buddies, they're guys, they're boys. And so they double team Saban. And so, yeah, man, so Moose, he chopped Saban, and the chops were loud too, man. And so, yeah, man, so Saban, he eliminated Moose. And then Moose, he helped Marcy from getting eliminated. And so Marcy had a big boot to Saban. And so at that point, man, Saban, he was fighting for his life. And so, to, yeah, so, yeah, Morrissey, he eliminated. So, Morrissey eliminated Chris Saban to win the Battle Royals. So, W. Morrissey wins. W. Morrissey wins and will enter the Call Your Shot gauntlet at number 20. So, that's the last person to come out in the gauntlet match. And Chris Saban will enter at number one since he was the last person eliminated. Since he was the runner-up, he'll start at number one. Chris Saban will. And so, yeah, man, so that was pretty much it with the Battle Royal. You know, the Battle Royale was all over the place, man. It was all over the place. But, yeah, it, it was fine. It was fine for what it was. But, yeah, man. So, yeah, we had a vignette, man. After that, we had a vignette. We had Minoru Suzuki. So, Minoru Suzuki will be showing up on Impact. So, they said coming soon to Impact Wrestling. So, yeah, man, that should be really good, man. Minoru Suzuki, we recently saw him in AEW fighting John Moxley. John Moxley and Eddie Kingston. Uh, Minoru Suzuki and Lance Archer fighting... John Moxley and Eddie Kingston. So, yeah, man. So, yeah, right after that, man, we had the, before we get into the, I guess, the main event, the the World Title Summit, Impact Wrestling World Title Summit. I forgot to mention that earlier with Christian Cage and Josh Alexander. So, yeah, man, before we get into that, let's talk about next week's show. So, yeah, so next week's show, we have, so, yeah, we have the Pick Your Poison match. For, so it's Mickey James' turn to do the Pick Your Poison match. Deanna Perrazzo already had hers at Knockouts Knockdown. So it's going to be Mickey James versus Savannah Evans next week. And also next week we have Alex Zane. We have Alex Zane versus Trey Miguel next week. And also we have Finn Juice. We have Finn Juice versus Finn Juice. That's David Finley and Juice Robinson versus The Bullet Club. So that's Chris Bay and Hikaleu. So I'm guessing this is the number one contenders match. And also, we have the Call Your Shot gauntlet match at Bound for Glory. And then, of course, we have the Impact Knockouts Championship Bound for Glory match between Deanna Perrazzo and Mickey James at Bound for Glory. And, yeah, that's that's everything, man. That's announced for next week and some of the matches that were announced for Bound for Glory. So, yeah, man. So right after that, man, we had the Impact World Championship Title Summit. So it's Chris 
Christian Cage, who is the Impact World Champion, and Josh Alexander, who is the challenger. So yeah, man. So we had Josh Matthews. John, Josh Matthews. He was the moderator. He was moderating the whole thing. So yeah, man. So yeah, Josh. He was talking about giving up the X Division Championship. And yeah, he was talking about giving up the championship, the X Division Championship. It it was a hard thing for him to do to give up the championship, but you know the Impact World Title is sweeter. So yeah. So yeah. At one point, Josh Matthews he asked, "Is there any similarities between Cage, Cage and?" Josh Alexander, and so Christian Cage, he was like, no. You know, there's no similarities between us. You know, the only the difference between us is keeping his emotions in check. You know, Christian Cage once again telling Josh Alexander to keep his emotions in check. And so, yeah, we had got to one point in the interview where they showed a video of a fan asking, you know, asking Christian Cage, like, if you were to fight anybody, if you were to face anybody or work with anybody, who would it be? And so you had the the fans that were at the fan fest. They chanted Josh Alexander. You had other people chanting Sammy Callahan. But I heard Josh Alexander. And so Christian Cage, he was like, "Who? I don't know who that is." And so yeah, they they played it. They played it, and then they cut it off. And so Cage, he was laughing. He was laughing. And so Josh, he was upset. He was not happy about that. And so yeah. He, he stormed off, so he was angry about it. And so he said that he lost his respect. He lost his respect for Christian Cage. And at Bound for Glory, he's going to become the new Impact World Championship. And so he walked off. Josh Alexander walked off saying the interview is over. And so Cage, to end that off, man, he said that, what, what did I say earlier about keeping his emotion in check? I, I, get, I proved my point. Proved my point. And so, yeah, man, so that was pretty much it with that, man. That was pretty much it. So Cage is playing mind games, man, playing mind games with Josh Alexander. Now with this, with the championship match, I don't know who wins. Well, you know what? I do know. Josh Alexander. Josh Alexander is going to win. He's going to win the Impact World Championship, and Cage is going to be right back in AEW. He's going to be right back in AEW. But, yeah, man, it's, it's, it's his time. It is his time. He gave up the X Division Championship for a reason. He gave it up for a reason. So, yeah, he better win. He better win. You gave up the X Division Championship, and for him not to win, it, dude, it's going to be all for nothing if he doesn't win. So he has to win. He has to beat Cage for the title. But, yeah, man, that, that, yeah, that was it, man. The promo was really good between these two. Cage is always a great promo, man, always a great promo, and I cannot wait for this match, cannot wait for it. And it's, I believe it is the main event. It's the main event. So, yeah, man, so I, I, I cannot – I said this all the time. I cannot wait for – Bound for glory. I cannot. It's next Saturday. Cannot wait. Cannot wait for it, man. So, yeah, man. So, that was pretty much it with Impact Wrestling for October the 14th, 2021 on The Ryan Awesome Show. And, yeah, man, if you haven't, if you like this video, man, hit the thumbs up. Hit the thumbs up. And if you're new to the channel, if you're watching The Ryan Awesome Show for the first time ever, hit that subscribe button. And right next to that subscribe button, there's a bell. Make sure you hit that bell. So you'll be the first ones to know when my next video is uploaded because I'm here every single week, man. Wednesdays for AEW Dynamite. Thursdays for Impact Wrestling, of course. Fridays for AEW Rampage. And Saturdays and Sundays are for WWE, AEW, and Impact Wrestling pay-per-view. So I'm here. Follow me on Twitter at Ryan Awesome Show. And yeah, man, I'll see you guys on Friday. See you guys on Friday for, for AEW Rampage. And I'll see you guys on Saturday for AEW Dynamite. So... Dynamite will be on Saturday this week because we have uh, preemption. So, we, so yeah, they got preempted, so they moved it to Saturday. And, we, of course, we didn't have Dynamite on Wednesday. So, yeah, we, don't, we didn't have Dynamite on Wednesday. So they moved it to Saturday because of the preemptions. So, yeah, so I'll see you guys on Friday, and then I'll see you guys on Saturday for AEW. And so, yeah, man, and comment down below, man. Tell me how you felt about Impact Wrestling. And, yeah, man, if you missed anything, if you missed uh, – if you missed last week's review of Impact Wrestling, the video is going to be right up here in this corner. And the link to that video will be down below in the description. And if you missed the Knockouts Knockdown review, the video is going to be right up here. And the link to that video will be down below in the description. And so, yeah, man, so both links will be down below in the description. And, yeah, man, and once again, guys, thank you for the support, the love, and the support for the show. Thank you, thank you, and thank you. And, yeah, man, and once again, guys, see you guys on Friday and then Saturday. 
And yeah, man, and this has been the Ryan Awesome Show. Take care, stay safe, and don't forget to be awesome. And that's that.